I'd had about a year of just being mentally rock bottom. I'd been drinking and I didn't care about myself at all. I had the worst depression. People I loved had died. I'd gone from 19 stone to 25 stone. I mean, we had a conversation last week and he said to me, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. I'm not saying I'm going to sort it. I'm saying I'm going to start trying. I know they just standing there, fucking getting fucked up. <laughs> Here we go again. It's the rebuild episode two. You might remember the last rebuild where I decided to film a month of training after I let myself get really out of shape, be really down and depressed and low. And I was like, I need something to just turn this fucking thing around. And this fat boy weightlifter who talks about football and fighting was going to try and lace the gloves up and actually learn how to box and show you all of the worst of me in that first month, including at the end of the first month, we get in the ring, we do five rounds of pads with my boxing coach who just so happens to be an 18 stone bad motherfucker who's had 40 fights in his life and then we put the gloves on together and we do body sparring and he just showed me what it was really about now body sparring isn't even anywhere near as bad as full sparring but it's still for a guy who was that out of shape who'd never boxed before I was in shock like what the fuck is going on right now I'm trying to keep this guy off me and he is all over me and I got a newfound respect for pro boxers weirdly i loved it so we carried on as best we could because there was four months roughly between then and now and half of that was locked down so you're gonna see months two and three of me learning how to box in this and i want to give a big shout out to gymshock before we get into this gymshock 66 is a campaign where they're encouraging people like you and me to take up a new habit and to better themselves and it usually takes 66 days in order to make that habit part of you part of your norm and that's what this is all about so i'm going to put the link in the description below they're a great bunch of lads they're always checking in on me and encouraging me and we want you to be a part of that so check the link out and let's pick up where we left off at the end of month one i was happy with last week even though i cast out again you don't get it brian don't I mean without talk about it you don't brian don't get it you know how many people quit would quit when i watched it <laughs> you were under pressure oh yeah, yeah, yeah you know how many people would have quit oh i know i know and then I suppose I, I don't really know that. Yeah, you no, do. no, no, the objective is yeah. to make you feel that, that pressure. Oh, yeah. But, this is the but, the caveat. You have to, I want you to learn uh -huh. how to feel like that and still execute what you've been taught. And to be in pain, to feel the pain yeah. and execute what you've been taught. Yeah. That's the key. That's it. That's a good jab you've got there, the jab. That's it. Try and extend your hip a little bit. That's it. That's it. I'm normally used to going this way. Like yeah, but you all are you. Like <laughs> moving. You're a power man. Yeah. But that's not the key. Yeah. That's not how you get the power. Okay. You're tightening up. You get you get the power right. through speed and being loose. Okay. So in, 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 in. Right into the body. Straight. Oh, you oh sorry. Sorry, mate. This guy's pain threshold is not normal. Just slip it. You can give a little cheeky nudge. Okay. You know what? There you go. Added layer of defense. There you go. <laughs> I like it. See, you're a fast learner. See, you're a quick learner. Good. See? Now your head's not coming up. Remember, it's about answering questions. So if I throw that combination and I realize. You can't, you don't bend your knees. Uh -huh. Now you're in trouble, so I'm gonna keep doing it more. Okay. Yeah. See, don't go up, bang. Bang. That's what you're gonna get. It's worth ducking then, isn't it? <laughs> I'm telling you. Bang. Now you're learning. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, what am I doing? <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> 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 I just realised what you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Training a tiny stone animal here. Yeah, what, what am I doing, man? <laughs> All right. Oh, dear. Jab, uppercut. Woof, woof, spin out. Beautiful. But, can you do it in real life? When you're under pressure? When you got me hunting you down? Free. Free. Uppercut. Well done. More or less. You're not going to learn it all overnight. Mm -hmm. It takes years to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. It takes years to learn. Oh yeah, I like that. Like. Because there's things I've learned that I've learned the hard way. Ended up on my back. Uh -huh. In front of people in your call, Beth and Green. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing. And I'm getting your head punched in. How many uh, amateur fights do you think you had? I had 40. Fuck I had 40, 40 fights. Every, well not every success, but most success, successes begin with failures. Yeah? True. Right? So you could say I failed, oh. but everything I learned, I passed on to my son. Yeah. So he avoids the potholes. Yeah. He avoids the potholes. So I say, don't do that, don't do that, this is the way forward. Does, um, does that feeling of the failure still stick with you now? No, I don't. I, I, don't have, I don't feel like, oh, I'm a failure like that because I understand it, it on a deeper level now. I understand I'm wise and I'm always learning, so I understand it on a deeper level. That wasn't my calling. Yeah, that, this, <laughs> being a, 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 a professional, a, a world champion, a British champion, that, was, that's not, that wasn't my calling. That's my son's calling. Yeah. And I'm, I've been put on this earth to help him get there. In those sessions in the studio where some people who don't know boxing might look at it and think this is two blokes dusting around with some gloves on, I am learning so much. I'm getting a fucking education from Derek. He knows so much about boxing. This guy spent his whole life devoted to boxing. When you go around to his flat, boxing channel is on and he's watching it. There's po posters and pictures around of Ricky Hatt and M Manny Pacquiao fight. No, you know, his son is a great up and coming boxer. He lives and breathes it. So when I'm getting that information he is checking all the time are you absorbing this you know if this happens what do you do if that happens how do you react i've taught you this and like if you fail a question at school you get a little cross next to it it's not a big deal derek will be like you're gonna get hit and i'm gonna show you how painful that's gonna feel he gives you no choice but to get better not just that he makes me a better person you know when you're around someone who's had all that life experience um he encourages me all the time he keeps it real like he credits me or he picks me up on things I need to do better. You can only become a better bloke when you're around a man who is as hard as Derek, but as good hearted as Derek. <laughs> One, two, one, two. One, what, 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 what? What? Hitting the heavy bag is the worst. I don't like it. Like, you know, doing pads a little bit flashy. In the ring, it's more exciting. The heavy bag just is quite soul destroying at times because I find it a bit boring. And also, with every time I hit that bag, those muscles in my arms and my shoulders are just getting slower and more full of blood and more fatigued because they're made for weightlifting. This is still new and it's so tiring. What? 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 Here, Ryan, 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 double it up, double it up, left hook, jab, under left hook, good man, jab, ding, one, two, up the air, right left hook, jab him, right uppercut, right uppercut, left hook, jab, ding, Ryan, move off, block and walk, hey, hey, block and beat, block, block, Good man. 
Pick him now. Pick him now. Pick him. Pick him. Three. Four. Double jab. Double jab, Ryan. Bend. Again. Bend. Put left hook on the end. Bend. Bend. Ryan. Bend. Good man. Let's go. And as you can see, those big muscles of mine are pretty fucking useless as the fatigue sets in and as the pad work is draining me. Because you can have as big a muscles as you want. If your shoulders are not conditioned to throw constant punches, you're going to blow that load very fucking quickly. And at this point, I'm not conditioned for it. That's why Derek is drilling that and making me keep throwing. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep going. Pads aren't a fight. A lot of people can look great on pads and do fuck all in a real fight. But you can get an idea of someone's output by watching pads and right now you can see my output is you know i look fucking thunderous for about a minute and then it's all downhill from there the heavy bag is surprisingly draining <laughs> you know and yeah you, you know, know you know what hold that phone you're gonna be saying that to me a lot in the next nine months however long it's gonna be you can that was surprise you're gonna say that surprised me that was draining mm, that's harder than it looks uh, you're gonna be saying that a lot yeah my goal of this body sparring is to just not get bullied the way I did last time. It was rough. I just want to answer him. If he hits me, I'm going to try and hit him back. I really, for my own self-esteem, just wanted to throw as many punches as I could just to prove that I, yeah, I'm not just going to be walked all over here and I've got some fighters. You know, as much as it was body sparring and not full sparring, like, you know, I, I, I felt proud of myself after that one. It, 
I might look like a big, strong fucking man, but people need to understand, like, I'm basically a fucking kid when I'm doing this. You know what I mean? So that was a, a big confidence booster that day. I felt great afterwards. You got it now. You got it now. You got it now. You let it flow. You let it flow now. Jab. Jab. Right hand. Perfect. Jab. One, two. Ping. Slip right hand. Flip. There you go. Move. That's it. Ping. Ping. Right hand left up. Long. Double right hand. Put him in. Back there. There you go. There you go. There you go. I might be bad. I feel a sense of pride. I appreciate you get something, man. I appreciate it. Like your mom's son. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like that. I must appreciate it. Hands up. Yeah. Ready? There you go. You see that? There you go. See, you got it now. There was something Derek said in that session that sort of caught me by surprise. He said, he felt the sense of pride when I got something right, like I was his own son. I grew up not really having a lot of time with my dad. So even now, when an older man like him is putting this time into me and, and, and trying to improve me and better me as a person, and then they say something like that, it still makes me feel like a young lad. You know what I mean? It meant a lot. It's funny how even now I'm a grown man, that sort of thing can still make me feel like a young kid. And I actually know Derek's son, Vidal Riley, who was my friend, who he was the one who put me together. Some of you might know him as KSI's coach. Others may know him as the future of boxing. He's got eight national titles, signed to Floyd Mayweather, gone undefeated as a pro. When I first met Vidal, I was like, how's this young guy got such a good head on his shoulders, so level-headed, yet got the world at his feet? I don't get it. Now getting to know Derek, I get it. This man will keep anyone grounded. But also, he is the reason Vidal is the way he is, kind of. Like, obviously, Vidal put the work in and he's naturally very talented. But you, I can tell, like, v Vidal would have been trained pretty much from the day he could walk. That passion, that knowledge, that experience that Derek had, and also with the fact that it didn't work out for him, he probably gave everything he possibly could to Vidal to turn him into the most unbeatable machine possible. It's not just about Vidal getting the success that it didn't happen for Derek. It's Derek just loves that kid. Like when he, he talks about him, his face changes. Um, I've seen a lot of people talk about their kids. I've never known anyone talk about their kid as much as Derek does. He absolutely adores him. This is the first time since I've been boxing, my dad's been in my corner. So I want to show my appreciation to him. Not just for Vidal as my friend, but also to watch Derek's happiness. I hope to God that Vidal wins a world title one day. I'm pretty sure it will happen, but you know, the good people and he deserves it. Listen, he's a man now, but like my mind's, stu my mind's still stuck in the past, isn't it? My mind's, my mind's stuck in the past. Yeah. From the days when I used to have hair. Like, yeah, so my mind's stuck there, you know? It's like Spartans, isn't it? You know Spartans, you've got to go out. They grow up, the boys, and they've got to go out and fight the wolf or whatever they're doing. And they write a passage and then come back. And that's what he's doing now. He's a man now, so he's got to do his thing. And there was actually a time where Vidal was training for his fight in America and we were in the boxing gym in London and Derek got one hell of a surprise. That's the art of the game. Don't just box one way. You know what I mean? You can't just box one way. That's it, you know what I mean? Hello, mate. <laughs> what? I've got you. I what? can't fucking believe it. I've got you good too. What? <laughs> Son, man. <laughs> you got to come. <laughs> What are you doing there, man? Surprised you, isn't it? <laughs> Just missed them beating us up. <laughs> I'm a wizard! <laughs> man! <laughs> oh, man! That's man. gonna be the camera, isn't it? There you Did go. You, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, how you doing? Yeah, I'm covered in sweat, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we mean, listen, nah, was I'm happy man. my son's back home. I showed him all the fun. Yeah. Peace, man. I'm happy, that. man. I'm, not, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Oh, that's a surprise laugh, isn't it? I was gonna wait till five. Oh, man. That's good stuff. It's getting serious now, aren't we, bro? It's getting there, like. Yeah. Flip. Flip. 
pivot round me. Pivot round me. That's it. That it. Good. Good. Remember what you've been told. I'm actually starting to think now. This is where all the knowledge that Derek has been putting into me for all those weeks is actually starting to be used in a combat situation. So when he's thrown with the right hand, I'm thinking, okay, he's open now, strike. So I had to be careful there at the end and not keep punching and then have nothing left in the tank. But that was, without doubt, the most aggressive I'd ever been in the boxing ring at that point. I can't tell you how demoralizing it is when you've given your best and you're getting tired and then Derek's opposite you in the corner just on his tippy toes just bouncing around like nothing's happened. <laughs> That's when you know I'm getting confident. When I'm starting to try and trick people at something, anything, that means I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable, I'm thinking. <laughs> If that was a boxing match, you would have won that one. I was, I was thinking as much as I could, you know. You done better when you got me on the ropes. You're thinking about what you yeah, were doing there. You definitely. weren't just proud in it. Yeah. I thought I got to, got to place my shots here. And you were thrown back as well, so it was giving me even more to think about. That's right. Because you threw some cracking shots back, so I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> think. I remember at the end of that session, just feeling like huge progress had been made from that first body sparring session to then. A short space of time, but I'd learned a lot and I was clearly much better. I mean, I was fitter. I was able to go longer without getting tired. I was, I was being the aggressor at times. I was thinking while I was in the ring, everything was coming together. There was one problem. I hadn't been punched in the face yet. And one thing I have that you can't teach, some people have it, some people don't. Pal, just punch hard. Today you'll learn a little bit of that today. Left hand only, but you're allowed body shots with both hands. To the corner, to the corner. Let's go.
One more round. Think now, Brian. Think about what you're doing. Punch bag, the drills on the pads. This is, what, this is where it counts. Step out. Head find it. Rubbish. Come on, rubbish. Head up, head up. <sighs> Piss off with myself. Why? Because I know you've taught me a lot better than that. It's just difficult to think when you have to do it all in the one go, you know? Well, that's the whole point of the exercise. <sighs> no, it's getting to be frustrating. Yeah. It means you can. <laughs> I want to, I'd rather go again. You want to go again? I'd rather do another round or two and actually oh, no, no see better. All right. And, uh, we do another two rounds in Essa. And then maybe do a round on the back. Even if you kick me off, I'd rather try until I can't. Because mentally, when I kept getting tagged, I was, uh, I gave up on myself and, and, and I just sort of took it rather than thinking. Even if I do one more round and it happens again, at least I've given it everything I've got. Let's box, come on. Bing, come on. Let's box, let's box. Bing, come on. Huh? Huh? Good man. Shot. Work, come on. Bing. That's it. Good job, Brian. Good man. Do it quick. <laughs> yeah, you fucking hell. So you get yourself together. I'm glad I tried again. Good man. That's hard. You crossed, you crossed the barrier there. I'm just missing. I'm missing me, mum. Yeah, you should be proud of you, though. No quit. Oh, Good man. Just miss me, mum. That's boxing, man. It brings out emotion. Oh. Oh, I miss her so much. <coughs> I don't know what the fuck this has got to do with her, but... I no, if it's boxing, it brings out emotions. Oh. It's raw. It's visceral. Oh, it's been on my head a lot lately. Yeah, it's a game. It's good, though, because it's not that cathartic. Oh, God. It helps you to <coughs> connect with your deeper emotions. Because she's the reason. I don't quit. That's right. Think about this, how many people would do what you're doing now? Yeah. You should be proud of yourself, man. I'm fine, mate, I just... No, I know you are. Just missing that. <sighs> Off your feet, man. Good man. Off your feet, man. No, I just don't want to quit. No, you didn't. You didn't quit. <sighs> you didn't quit, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. 
Sorry, lads. Come, don't worry about that. Listen, <sighs> seen it all. Seen it all, right, man. Good man, come here. She's the person I think of. Well, after dig deep. Yeah. You know? When you were watching that, you probably thought I was all fucked up off of getting hit. Um, but the whole time I was thinking about my mum. She's the person who always pushed me on through every hard moment, every hard time of my entire life. I never thought I'd speak about this. I might never speak about it again. It's difficult. A few years ago, my mom passed away and I just didn't want to share that with YouTube because it's not a nice place. To, I haven't found it very empathetic. Uh, the trolls and that, like, I didn't want to give that special piece of me over for people to use it against me and hurt my feelings all the more. But when this happened and we captured it just randomly on camera in the middle of some boxing gym, I also thought about a lot of you lot who were probably feeling the same way and also that I just didn't want to go to my grave without having the chance to tell everyone how much she means to me. I shouldn't not do that just because there's horrible people out there. So sometimes in life there are people who devote their entire lives to helping others. Not for money, not for fame, not for anything, no personal gain, just because they love to help people. And normally those are the unsung heroes who never get the credit they deserve. But I have the honor of telling all of you lot that my mom was one of those people. An angel that I was fortunate to not just know, but to have as my mother. When I was born to her, I won the lottery. I could not have met a more caring, kind-hearted, devoted mother. She was just the most beautiful soul I've ever met in my entire life. Everything good about me, everything you like about me, it's because of her and it's always been because of her. When I make you laugh, it's because I made her laugh and she used to encourage me to make her laugh. When people sent us messages about how caring I was, when Sean Atwood was crying on our podcast and how I said all the right things, well, that was because of her. When I make you feel anything, it's because she always encouraged me to be who I am and to not be ashamed of that and to believe in myself always. Even down to me being a Newcastle fan, like she, she queued up for hours to get me tickets to my first game. And when all the other boys were getting taken by their dads, there was me with my mom. And she was cheering Newcastle on, even though she didn't know a single player. And she would just do anything for us. She was so devoted as a mother. So you like me because of her. Everything good about me is because of her. I remember those times where 
we didn't have much at Christmas and I remember just hugging her on my bed and saying it didn't matter because we had each other. I've never felt love like that. True. True love. Real, real, the most powerful love possible. That's the kind of love that even when the person leaves you, oh, that stays with you and keeps you going through all the hard times. <laughs> through all the shit I've been through. She's the reason that I always keep going. No matter how hard it gets. And when I was in that ring, <laughs> I just, just wanted to not give up. <sighs> and every tear that I cry is because of the warmth that she put in me and the man that she made me. I know that some people think I'm this fucking prick who's up his own ass big YouTuber, podcaster, True Geordie. All I am is a kid who misses his mom. Deep, deep down inside, that is who I am. I love her and I miss her every day. She was my mom. She was my dad. She was my best friend. We told each other everything. I could trust her with anything. Didn't matter. When someone has your back that much, it, it's like a superpower. You know, you can always go with that person. She was the love of my life. And anyone I love after her, it's just getting some of what she gave to me. Because without her, I would never have been the person I am. And I know I'm a very flawed person, but anything good in me is from her. I might never talk about this again, and I hope you understand that. But I want you to know... If you like me, it's because of her. <laughs> and I dedicate everything I ever achieve. If that is any good to my own mom. All the credit to the kid who came from nothing and made himself into something because she taught me to always believe. <sighs> I love you, ma'am. When you've never been hit before and you watch boxers do it on TV and you see them punching back and forth and it, they, they act like it's nothing, it's not a big deal. You see them, they don't flinch, they don't back off, they don't act like they're hurt. It, it looks like it's easy. They've just done it for thousands of hours. So it's nothing to them. To people like me and you, oh, it's a big deal. 
It's a big fucking deal. When you've never had someone hit you hard in the face before, and then a man like Derek, who weighs the same as Anthony Joshua and has had 40 fights and knows exactly how to plant a jab right in your fucking grill. You have this moment of boom, and it's all kinds of confusion, pain, your, your body naturally goes, oh fuck, I don't, want, I don't want that to happen again. You want to run away, you want to get out of there, you don't want to carry on, but you have to if you want to learn how to box. So I knew I needed to overcome that before I could even think about becoming a good boxer. If I can't take a fucking punch, I got no chance. Big mom. See, this year is not me boxing. It's me trying to land one shot and then covering up for dear life. And it's just a fear of getting hit. You've got to do it, Brian. You've just got to get out there and make sure you can get fucking punched, but land one. He's standing with his hands by his side because he's trying to provoke us. But if it's just fucking my confidence up even more, to be honest, because I'm like, he doesn't even need his hands up yet. I'm, I'm, I think I try for something. I finally get the confidence to come in. He easily evades my job and I left myself wide open for a good dig right in the fucking face. I'm not just saying this, I really was questioning what the fuck I was doing at this point. Like, I'm like, I put all this pressure on myself to learn how to box. Everyone knows I'm trying to learn this. And here I am in the ring thinking, you just can't fucking get over this getting hit in the face shit. Stop being a fucking pussy. And this is very early on still, but I'm just thinking, if you can't do that, then you're never gonna learn. So I, I tried to, to go out for the next round with that attitude of, this is now or never really. <laughs> Definitely landed with that one. <laughs> Derek is not trying 100%, anywhere near 100% here. Yeah. He is lowering his level to bait me into actually trying to box him. And to catch him with that, that punch was a solid job. And it gave me some confidence. Like, yes, I'm in range. I'm finally connecting and I'm not bottling it anymore. <laughs> Now we're boxing. Then now we're boxing. When Derek said that, I got such a confidence boost because I felt like I'm competing a little bit here. I'm actually putting myself in there and I'm going for it a bit. That's it. So it's not working, boy. When it's round five and Derek says it's time to get to work now, you're like, where the fuck are you being, pal? Another one, come on, one more. One more. One more. One more. And that's it. One fucking more. Jesus Christ, the state of his man. This is the last one. Work. Come on. Yeah. Come on. When you're hitting another man and he's shouting come on to you, it does something. On the one hand, it's fucking motivating. On the other hand, you're like, I'm fucking trying, bro. What the fuck? Come on, literally, look. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Don't get greedy. Don't get fucking greedy. Well done. <coughs> Hit the bar. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll liven you up. Well, you know, it? <laughs> oh, you bastard. That was cool. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything more pathetic in your life? These sessions are not about me being a great boxer, clearly. Uh, it's about me paying my dues and, and actually taking punishment and learn the skills. That's what this is all about. And Paddy was saying the same thing. He was like, fucking head guards are annoying, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad you think that. Yeah, I'm going to try and relax a bit more, Dean. This will like... If I get hit, I get hit. Is it? <clears throat> so what's happening here is we're supposed to be jabbing. Now, in my inexperience rather than doing a straight arm i've come a little bit around the outside to catch Derek because his guards up that is technically a hook so i done fucked up because this is jabs only body shots Derek didn't didn't like it very much if you get it like that don't worry. i'm not taking the piss that was a straight right to the head. We're not really supposed to do that by the rules of Derek, but he, he was teaching me a lesson there. Like if you fuck around and you make mistakes like that, I'm going to punish you for it. That's what it's like in a boxing gym sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Getting a bit tasty now, isn't it? Credit to Derek, right? I'm a big guy. I punched him pretty hard in the belly there. And I heard the wind go out of him. But he d he doesn't show anything. The guy has a stone face, like, that you never can tell. <laughs> it was a good jab. I felt so delighted. Like, I'm actually fucking landing on him now. Like, properly. He didn't just let me have that. I had to get that. I knew the difference. <laughs> That moment where I slipped the jab, it stuck out in my head because it's one thing throwing big bombs and hitting the pads and all of that. But in order to read a punch coming at you and to move out the way, especially for a 21 stone man, I was like, wow, I'm really learning the skills here. Like, I'm actually using what he's taught me here. And for me, boxing is the art of hitting without getting hit. And that showed me I can kind of do this a little bit right now, like a tiny little bit. And that gave me so much belief. And the, it's so weird when you feel the glove slip past your, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> the problem is I didn't have the boxing IQ to make him pay for that at the moment, but it was coming. There was something there. I was like, okay, I've slipped the punch. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Derek was not in a good mood that day, I tell you. You've got no business being in a boxing ring if you don't expect to get hit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what I want for you. I'm not scared to get hit. Yeah, I know. You are learning. It's coming slowly. Yeah. You're not scared to get hit. You still get a bit shaken. I see it when I hit. When I clip you, I go, oh, oh like. There was like three where I'm like, oh, that's a good shot. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And you're thinking, because you hit me with a good left hook right in the, in the side of the plexus. Uh -huh. it's a good shot. So after a few spars where we're using jabs and both hands for body shots, I was finally getting used to getting hit in the head. So now it was about trying to think more, trying to do a little bit of more footwork and actually use some head movement and, and land and actually be a better boxer. The levels go up. Agreed. <laughs> It 
was good to land one shot. Um, I'm getting my ass kicked yeah. in case you didn't know. And it's because Derek has put the level up on me. He can tell I'm getting used to getting hit, so he's increasing the pressure. The problem is, he is so fit, and I am not as fit as him, nowhere near. And my gas tank is going, and I'm struggling to survive in there. That's it. Good man. <laughs> <sighs> I am so fucked at this point. That was the moment where I realized just how important my fitness was. Like Derek hadn't really pushed a pace like that on me before. That was the moment I realized, okay, if I'm ever gonna be good at this and able to do the things I know how to do, but can't do as efficiently because I'm too big and slow right now, I need to start running. I need to start fucking doing cardio. It actually made me think about Tyson Fury. Fuck me, he was nearly 30 stone and he came back. And the, the fact that he was able to even box again, let alone win the heavyweight title, it blows my mind. I'm sitting here at 21 stone, just like thinking, I wish I could shed another two stone. But like things like running is really difficult in my way. So that was the moment where I thought, need to fucking sort this like because I want to be able to do this and I, and I want to be able to be in that ring and not feel like the main worry is am I going to get tired at that moment I knew that if this was a boxing match that I would have been stopped and he would have been the winner I would have been the loser he would have had the glory I would have had my ass kicked all of that and I sort of got a chance to sort of think oh well what does that actually feel like you know because I've watched so many fights before obviously there's nothing on the line I'm not dealing with the consequences of a pro fighter but I, I was okay with it. I was like, okay, like, you know, no shame in it, really. I mean, Derek's had 40 fucking fights, for Christ's sake. He's a hard man. And I didn't feel any hurt male pride or shame or tried my best. I'm learning. It's going to happen. It's fine. The punch itself sucked, but it was more that I just left myself vulnerable by not doing enough cardio so that I was in a place where I couldn't defend myself properly. I was pissed off at myself. Okay, you're looking down the side of this rifle. You want to keep your sight locked in to your opponent. My rifle sight is going where you're going. So that's how you must be. Once I've jabbed that once, twice. You gotta get out of there. You've got to move. Okay. You've got to move, because something big's coming and painful. That don't sound right, don't put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> bing, bing. And then you would return to bing, bing, boom. bang. Now you start to get it. Just hit and not be hit. Oof. This is the line. Yeah. Move. That's it. Other way. That's it. Other way. Other way. That's the line. You let me have it all my own way, innit? Look. All day long I do this. Look. Look. Walk to the right when I want to. Look. No, hands up. Concentrate. That lead leg in line with mine. When I move it, you move yours. Move it. Let's say you cut someone off. This session was a bit of a psychological breakthrough because even though I was kind of getting used to getting hit now, I was still doing some of those bad habits that you do when you're avoiding it, the exchanges because you're a bit defensive. You're backing off, you're, you're circling the wrong way. I wasn't acting like the big man, which I am the big man. So I should be imposing my size on anyone who's in there with me, but I wasn't. I was acting like this little defensive guy. And he made me sort of plant my feet and go, I'm going to take punches. I'm going to get used to it. And I'm going to defend them. I'm going to block them, but I'm also going to sort control in that ring. Don't you move from this spot. See this. Don't move from there. Put your toe opposite mine. Uh -huh. Yes. Stay there. Are you trying to hit me in the face? Okay. It's very rare that um, another man makes me feel like that. When you care about another bloke and you develop that, like, friendship, there's a bit of you that I don't want to fucking hurt Derek, you know what I mean? But like, this is part of the learning experience is understanding that this is what we're here to do. Like, it isn't like we're actually trying to rip each other's heads off, but it's a bit of an unusual thing to punch someone you like. Good. 
I've got to give credit to Derek because obviously there's everything needs working on in my boxing game right now, but he is good at looking at what is a priority. This lesson really addressed some of the major things I was doing wrong in previous weeks. Better. Nice. Oh. Now you're getting it. Oh. Now you hey, Now you're getting it. <laughs> it's better than standing there like a flipping telegraph pole, oh, isn't it? Remember what you've been taught. Remember what we were doing just a minute ago. So what's happening here is Derek has spent most of this session teaching me how to fight in the pocket. And I've spent all of this time memorizing, okay, this is what I do here, this is what I do there. And he's went, right, okay, now we're gonna have a little spa and you're gonna put that into practice. He's come out, the first thing he does is change to Southpaw. It's completely fucked me over. Like I can't, now I'm like having to reconsider everything all over again. <laughs> I'm mentally struggling right now. Like, he's got me flustered and I, I wasn't expecting this. So I'm sort of giving up a little bit on myself because I just can't seem to find the tools for the job. Hold on. Hold on. Why are you shaking your head? Huh? It's annoying. Why? Because I was shit there. No, he wasn't. We'd rehearse four rounds of you doing left hand sparring. I'm finally ready to use it on you. You go right hand, I'm like, I switched on purpose. I've got no answer for it, mate. Exactly. Fuck. I'm, I'm in a huff here, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm totally in a huff. I'm <laughs> just so fucked off. I just wasn't able to use everything you just taught us. Because when you come to practice now, it. Now, now, listen, listen, you just don't get. The blessing, because you're born left-handed. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that shit. Someone's gonna beat me, beat you, beat anyone, my son. You think you're just gonna roll out of bed and think, oh, I was born left-handed, lottery, I was born left-handed, and I'm gonna win, no. It's universal. What I taught you is universal. Okay. It goes for orthodox okay. and southpaw. The fundamentals remain the same. Okay. And looking back at it, he was doing everything for my own good there. And he taught me a very valuable lesson. But sometimes those lessons, at the time, they, they hurt your ego. <laughs> Fucking hell. Nearly, but Derek is so quick to react and I've left my chin right out there and he fucking plants one on us. Oh, he did and all you know. Even that hit is right on the jaw. Boom, the impact of the head shakes back and then the jaw, oh, fucking vibrating. Jesus Christ, son. When Derek's in there, to him, it's like driving a car. He's in first gear, he's putting the hammer, oh, he, he just knows what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? With me, I'm the learner driver, so I'm having to think of every little thing that I need to do in there. And for him, it just comes so natural. There's no thought needed. And that's what I want to get to. My goal isn't like a lot of these YouTube boxers, for example, God bless them, get your money, lads. But I'm not looking for glory. I'm looking for skill. I want to. I want to get education. I want to learn about fighting by being in there. You know what I mean. So that when I am talking about fighting, as much as everyone wants to call me the fight casual and all that, I want to pay my dues. I want to get these skills, and I want to feel like I've earned the right, to some degree at least, to not just be the couch expert, but to say, yeah, I've fucking been in there. I know how it fucking feels, and I and I've done it. <laughs> 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 Got as well a good body shot, like that was a good one that. You're taking it pretty well to be honest. I don't know how you are when you go home. Well I'm going to do the kickoff now, so I'm gonna have to be alright. <laughs> <laughs> they must look at me and think what the fuck is this cunt playing at? Better. 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 
30 seconds. <laughs> Again. <laughs> One, two. Flip. Flip. Step up. I'm fucking dreading this, I'm not gonna lie. Why? Now this is light, man. So not yeah, well, it's, it's, it's more how I'm feeling today, mixed with the idea of getting punched in the head. This was the first time that we'd used both hands full sparring, although we're not throwing hard punches here, we're just getting me in the habit of using both hands. Nice and light. It was weird because it, it had been so long of me just jabbing and going body shots without using the right hand. I kind of had to remember that it was there. Hey, you've got to savor those moments when you actually do it in an actual combination. I'm slipping, I'm landing. Obviously, it's not full power, but before people slag us off, I know I'm not Muhammad Ali here, and I know this is just two guys sparring. They're going soft. We're not trying to hit each other hard, but I am taking every little win I can at this point. And you see, when he comes in here, Derek, I read the punch correctly. I answer him. He comes back in again. After I've gone for three, I read it perfectly, and again, I hit him with another couple. That's a massive win for me, because less than a couple of months before this, I was getting belted all around the fucking ring with body shots, and I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. So the next session started like any other. We're hitting pads. Derek's like, yeah, you're going to spar me today for a round. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, then you're going to spar someone else. Are you sure? Like, Derek has been my comfort zone. Like, he is my coach. I know, although I might get smacked up a bit, he isn't going to take the piss. And there's a level of responsibility there for him to not fuck me up. Whereas someone else, that isn't there. He said, yeah, you're sparring a Nissan kid. Please welcome. That was a big punch by Gibble. The beast from the east. That's just non-stop pressure from Gibble. Relentless body shots. But Gibble just keeps going. How is he still going after that? And Eason Gibble. You can't run from Big Giver no more. I'm everywhere, baby. For those who don't know Anison Gibb, he has been one of the original YouTube boxers. He has been boxing for at least three years, if not longer. He was on every big boxing card, including his own against Jake Paul. He lost against Jake Paul, but he went after him. He landed punches and he is known to be ferocious. His biggest strength is his fitness. My biggest weakness is my fitness. And at the time of this uh, spa, he was 100 kilograms almost. Like the guy was a crew. Away, you know what I mean? So it wasn't that big of a size difference that you'd expect because he is thick right now. He has all the experience. That's the main thing is I was thinking because he's been boxing three years. I've been boxing three months, once or twice a week. You know, this guy's been to Mayweather gym. You know what I mean? He's, I respect him. You know, yeah, you lost one fight. You batter the other two cunts. So yeah, I was aware that I would have a height and reach advantage. But at the same time, Cable, if I get tired, is going to be all over me. And that is a miserable experience for everyone everyone KSI all of them have said like he pushes the pace on you and it's fucking horrible but Derek told us to do it so that's what I was going to do and obviously we weren't going to try and rip each other's heads off there was no right hands you know to the head it was jabbing body punches I knew it was a really good test for me to find out just where I was at at this point so you're both super heavies yeah well you're a bridge weight and he's a yeah. heavyweight what's a bridge weight the weight in between cruiser right? and heavy we can't skip on the bell. Yeah. Yeah, Come on. Nice and easy. Remember both of you to move both ways. There you go, good jab, bro. Good jab, Brian. You've got a double jab to get inside. That's it. Head and body. Yeah, that's it. Good. 
Good. Good slip. You can follow it. That's it, dry on that jab. That's all you need to do. If you miss it, it doesn't matter. Good. You keep trying to think about. Right. So that's it. There you go. Now you relax. Good job to the check, you know. Good. I know, don't, don't immediately really have to return. Good round. Good round. Good round. One more round. Good. Good work with the jab. There you go, last round. Show him the jab, right? Show him the jab. Paint, 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 pick, paint, pick. Pick, paint, pick, paint. That's it. That's it, that's it. That's it. Don't overcommit. Right, move to your left. Move to your left. That's it. Good, good. Don't go back in the straight line. I don't want that to told you. Good, Kevin. That's it, the upright. That's it. Please. Good, good, Kevin. Flip it, Kevin. Flip it, flip it. I know you're getting tired. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Hard work, come on, Keep last flicking, minute. Brian. Keep flicking, Brian. flicking, Brian. Relax and show That's it. Defense, that's it. Go back in straight line, give angle. That's better. That's better. Don't go straight line. See? Good. 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 Straight line, get down in straight line. Get that jab. Catch the jab and shoot. But then upstairs after that, Jim. That's it. Is your round to skill now? Good, Jim. You seconds to skill. Good, Jim. Two seconds. Alright. Well done. 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 It's not mine. It's good. Let's get that jab going. Good. I know I could have done a bit more. No, you've done good. You've done good. You've done good. Good smile, bro. I respect you, man. I really do. I think the main thing was, he just never goes away, does he? No. I faced the ceiling at one point. You jabbed the top of my head and I went like that. I looked. I could see. I could see the ceiling. He's improved a lot. He's improved a lot and I know he would improve with, I knew he would improve with my dad. What I expected to see, I've seen and that's improvement. Well Derek was happy with how I did, so I was happy. But obviously I was thinking, yeah, I could have done this, I could have done that. There's a few mistakes. I'll be obviously I'm gonna make mistakes all the time. And I'm sure Gabe was thinking, I could have done this, I could have done that. Because the first time you spar someone new, it's a bit, whoa, this is different. Especially because me and Gibbo are so different in what our abilities are. Gibbo's the stamina pressure guy, and I'm big tall fucking gorilla. Uh, <laughs> there's a weird sort of bond that you get from a situation like that. Cause you sort of give your body over to the other guy and go, you can beat me up and learn from it. And I can beat you up and I'll learn from it. And we're helping each other. And I have respect for anyone who gets in the ring, especially Gibble, because obviously I was so much bigger than him. He is a fighter right in there, this guy. So respect the Gibble for a start. And I was proud that I, I, I was composed. It, it wasn't about uh, winning and losing, it was about about doing what I'd been taught when I had someone completely different and something completely new coming at me. And can I remember it in that event? And I did. I'm still just learning. I'm, I'm a baby, like I say, a few months in this now, but I'm loving it. Boxing's been one of the best things to happen to my mental health and I still have fucking major low days. I'm not even gonna deny it. There's some days I think, what the fuck am I doing here on this planet? What's the point? We all have those. 
but it really uh, it makes me happy digging deep inside yourself to find out what you're made of it's good for you challenging yourself is good for you as, as hard as it is it makes you value yourself more it gives you self-worth so i fucking recommend it <laughs> you know looking back at the first rebuild i think i just tried to bite off more than i could chew i was doing weightlifting i was talking about trying to fix my mental health i was trying to learn how to box and i realized like some things just need more focus than others you can't spin all those plates at once while having a job and and friends and family and all of that so weightlifting for example that slowly calmed down because i realized you cannot weightlift like a power lifter and then try and be a boxer your muscles just aren't gonna fucking hack it and my mental health definitely still needs more time and attention so gymshock have, have talked to me about you know this gymshock 66 thing that they do which is a campaign to help getting people inspired at the start of the new year uh, i've put the link in the description below i mentioned it at the start and i'd encourage you all to give yourself a challenge for me personally um i want to get fitter because that's the main thing holding me back i'm learning the boxing but i'm getting too tired i'm, I'm gassing out i'm you know even at the end against gable i'm i'm getting tired and he's just fresh <laughs> you know what i mean so that's my main goal for this year is to try and run more try and do more cardio get this fucking weight off me i'm still stuck on 21 stone which is where i was on the last rebuild and that's the main thing is my diet all of that it hasn't been there I, but like i say i think i just bit off more than i could choose so this is my give myself one clear goal is to just get fitter hopefully lose some weight i will if you all want it in the comments i'll read them keep you updated and do another rebuild episode if you want it I really hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears, as you have seen. Thanks to me true fans, the ones who really look out for us, the ones who have me back. You just mean the world to us and I probably don't say it enough because I think I just close off from the world sometimes because of my mental health. I just don't want to go through the bullshit of the trolls and all the negativity that's online. But, you know, I see your comments. I know you're there. I know you've got me back and I really appreciate it. So big love, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you later.